Hey guys, in this video we're going to go through how to find the centroid of a composite shape. So a composite shape is a section which can be made up of circles and rectangles and other shapes where we know the centroid of that section. Now um, the first step in trying to solve these types of problems is to take the section and break it up into the shapes of which we know the centroid. So in our class previous to this uh, we will have introduced how to find the centroid for a triangle, how to find the centroid for a rectangle and for a circle. So you can see that this shape here can be broken up into three pieces. Um, the first piece is a triangular shape on the left hand side which I'll now uh, draw a boundary around. Um, the second shape which we can see, so this is shape number one, uh, the second shape would be this rectangular shape just around the outside edge here. One, two, three, and then the last side is here. So this is shape uh, number two. And then inside um, this rectangular shape, you can see that there's a circular hole which has been cut out of this. So it has a negative area. Uh, I could shave that area. So this circle here we can call shape number three. All right, so each one of these sections has a centroid. Um, now what we can do is we'll, uh, we can break up those three shapes, so I've got a table here just down the bottom which I can use to summarize those sections. Um, shape number one was a triangle. Shape number two was a rectangle. Shape number three was a circle. Uh, circle hole. Okay, so shape number one has an area uh, A1 and that will be equal to um, a half times the base of that triangle, 8 times the height of that triangle. Uh, so we can calculate that area. Um, that would be equal to 8 times 4 divided by 2, 16. Okay, so the rectangle um, has area A2, because it's shape number 2. Uh, this will become 4 times 12. And then multiplying those together, we get 48. And third, um, we have a circular hole, A3. This will be a negative area, so we we'll write negative. And we use the formula for a circle, so pi times the diameter of 3 squared uh, divided by 4. So putting that into a calculator uh, we get um, pi times 3 times 3 divided by 4 uh, 7.0685 uh, or 0 7.069 rounded minus 7.069 Alright so we've got our three areas uh, we can now calculate the uh, coordinates of the centroids for those shapes. Um, for shape number one, the centroid for shape number one is here. Uh, for a triangle, it is one third of the distance from the right hand side, so one third from this, this right angle section, so one third times eight. And then from the left hand side, this will be equal to uh, two thirds times eight, which is our width of that triangle. Um, so the distance from O will be two-thirds of eight, um, which we can calculate now. So two divided by three times eight, 5.33 is that dimension here. 5.33. Uh, for our rectangle, uh, the centroid is in the middle of this 12 distance here. So this distance is equal to 12 divided by 2, which is 6. So the distance to the centroid of shape number 2, uh, which is going to be um, x bar 2, will be 8 plus uh, 6, which is equal to 14. This was x1 at the top, by the way. All right, for shape number, th uh, for shape number 3, the circle, uh, so this is x3, uh, the distance will be 8 plus 12, 
and then minus 2 and then we get to the middle of that circle. So 8 plus 12 um, minus 2 we'll get 18. For a y bar, uh, for the triangular section this will be equal to uh, one third of the distance um, up. So that distance there will be one third times four. Um, that will be equal to y one one third times four, which is one point three uh, reoccurring. For shape number two, the rectangle, um, it'll be half of the height, which is four. Um, this is y two equal to. Uh, 2. It happens to be resting on the x-axis, so that's why it's equal to 2. And also for y3, uh, we are given that it's too high. The center of the circle is 2 millimeters high. Um, Alright, so it could be uh, different in other cases, and other questions that you do in the future. Alright, so these boxes on the right hand side, uh, they can be solved um, just from the information we have in the table now. So now we don't need the information in this uh, diagram. So I'm going to move the page up. All right. So this value here, a n x n, um, this value here will be a1 times x1. This value here will be a, uh, a2 times x2. This will be a3 times x3. Um, in this case, so A1 is 16, X1 is 5.33, so we can calculate the value um, over here. So this would be uh, equal to 16 times 5.33, uh, this value is 85.28. Uh, this one here will be 48 times 14. So 672. Uh, and then this one here will be equal to minus 7.069 uh, times this value here of 18. So minus 7.069 times 18. And we get minus 127.2. Alright, so we can do the same for the right hand side. So a n, uh, y n for the first one will be a1, y1, a2, y2, and a3, y3 for the third. So this will be equal to this value, 16, times 1.3 a reoccurring. 16 times 1.3. I get 20.8 um, so I could put that into more decimal values if we want be closer to 21.33 reoccurring uh, for the second value so 48 times 2 96 and then the third one will be minus 7.069 uh, times uh, 2. So this is minus 14.14. Uh, 4. So in the bottom section here, uh, we can write the totals. Um, so here we can write the total area. The total area would be 16 plus 48 minus 7.069. 16 plus 48 minus 7.069. Alright, so 56.931 is going to be our total area. So this value here is the sum of area. Over here, uh, we can write the sum of these values. So that would be equal to 85.28 plus 672 minus 127.24 and this is equal to 630 point in this case 0 and that is the sum of a n 
Xn. It's the sum of all of our A values times their centroids. We call it the first moment of that area section. And this one here, uh, 21.833 reoccurring. Oh, sorry, uh, that value was 21.33 reoccurring, if I recall correctly. Yeah, so 21.33 reoccurring times 96 minus 14.14. Might be helpful if I write the minus sign. And plus. Alright, so this is 103.2, and this value here is the sum of a n y n. All right, so we can calculate the centroids. Um, we'll use the formula um, which we've uh, to calculate the centroids um, to find x bar. We use the sum of a n x n over the sum of area. That is this value here, 630 divided by 56.931. And um, for y bar, we use the sum of a n y n divided by the sum of area, and this is equal to uh, six uh, one zero three point two divided by fifty six point nine three one. So uh, these values we just uh, plug into our calculator. So this will be six thirty divided by fifty six point nine three one which is 11.066 and for the second value for y bar uh, this will be 103.931 uh, sorry 103.2 divided by 56.931 and that's 1.81 so the average position of our x bar our value is 11.06 um, that's in millimeters an average position um, in the y direction is uh, 1.81 millimeters. Um, so if we match, match that back to